So in the final part of this unit, um, I want to look at some of the ways you could do with formatting rather more complicated data structures. So everything we talked about in the string interpolation works absolutely brilliantly for simple data types, particularly scalar variables. So we just have one value um, and for relatively simple um, uh, things like a collection, like arrays. But when you have more complicated data, um, such as um, combinations of collection types, so dictionaries, which have include dictionaries or lists of dictionaries, then the simple string interpolation methods we've talked about start to get a little bit difficult to, um, to use. Um, and so I want to introduce you a few Python modules which can help you um, produce nice, nice looking um, output of these more complicated data types. And the first one we're going to look at is the pprint module, which stands for pretty print. And this provides a couple of useful functions that are particularly designed um, for helping you display complicated uh, data types in a way that is relatively easy for, for a human to, to get their head around. So the simplest thing to go and do is just give you an example of how this is done. So we've imported the pprint module and um, then I'm going to take the, the dictionary that we previously had, and I'm going to add a new key to it. Um, so I'm going to add a, diction a key dictionary to the dictionary dictionary, um, and that is going to include a copy of the original dictionary. Um, and that sounds horrendously complicated, um, but when we use the pprint function from the pprint module, so pprints.pprint, and print out the result, hopefully it becomes a lot clearer what it is we've just gone and done there. And so what pprint is doing is it's um, printing out that dictionary, it's putting uh, each key in the dictionary on a separate line. Um, it's sorting the keys into alphabetical order. And it is um, where we have a nested dictionary is doing the same in a kind of sort of recursive sort of way. So it, it prints out the, the, the sub dictionary again, using the same rules of um, how it works. Um, so um, the result then becomes something which is, is reasonably easy. Of course, it's still the case that things like the uh, floating point numbers are not being particularly cleverly formatted. So the, the individual scalar variables are still um, being printed out with lots of decimal places or um, without um, plus signs and all those other things we just looked at in the previous uh, unit. But the, the overall effect is certainly improved on just what would happen if you just simply asked it to, to print the dictionary where it would print it all out on one line um, uh, and it would be a lot less readable. If you don't want to just print it out to the um, notebook or the console, um, but instead to put it into a string, then uh, the pprint module includes a p format, uh, so pretty format that you can use as well. Um, and so this does essentially the same job, but it's doing it in two steps. It's um, uh, creating an output string first, and then it's printing that output string. Um, and you're actually using string interpolation to go and do that. Um, uh, and the result looks very, very similar, obviously, because the P format has, has done its work on that dictionary. So both pprint and p format, I think a few additional keyword parameters you can use to do things like controlling the indentation of the line or the uh, when you want nested dictionaries or um, for controlling the length of the line that it's assuming you're working with so it knows where to break lines apart um, and also to do things like control with you you sort the um, the keys the dictionary and so on um, and those are all well documented um, in the in the python documentation the pprint function, so pprint.pprint, also takes a parameter called stream, and that can be used to specify a file to write to. So for example, if I want to write that um, nicely formatted dictionary straight out to a file, then it just becomes a, a two line operation. So I have my um, with open, which we covered in unit one of the files videos, um, so I create a file variable writer that's connected to this open file that I've got open for writing. And I simply pass writer as the stream parameter into the uh, pprint.pprint. And then rather than printing out to the, um, 
uh, the console, it will print it out to um, uh, uh, out, out to a, um, the file directly. And in fact, this is actually very similar to the uh, file parameter that uh, print uses. So with a standard print function, there's a um, there's a file keyword parameter which you can use in the same way as a way of redirecting the output to a file. Okay, so pprint's great, um, uh, and it produces for, uh, output that's relatively easy for humans to read, but quite often what we want to go and do is have some format that is both machine readable and human readable. So we want something which we can easily read back in with uh, some code that can um, uh, understand the structure we're trying to construct, but equally easily, equally we want something which um, a human being could go and understand and if necessary edit. Uh, and there are a wide variety of formats actually that that, that um, go and do this. Um, but I just wanted to mention a couple of the um, increasingly popular ones. So the first of those is JSON or JavaScript object notation. Uh, and this is meant, I mentioned this because this is a format that is widely used for transferring data between uh, applications and web-based services. Um, so whenever you're interacting with a website and um, it's doing something where you're you're um, uh, retrieving information without it, without having to um, reload the whole web page. So uh, if you're looking up something on a form on a web page, probably in the background, um, the uh, code that's running on the web page is talking again to a server and it's probably talking using this JSON format. And Python can also go and talk to this JSON format. And the other one I wanted to mention was uh, YAML, which stands for YAML ain't a markup language. Um, there's a kind of history of making recursive ac acronyms in computing. So this is just another one of these. Uh, and this is a particularly widely used to go and store um, configuration information, uh, typically a lot in cloud-based computing applications as well. Um, and so this actually becomes quite a nice way if you need to write a program which stores some settings um, to read back later, then YAML is a quite a nice um, uh, format to go and do that in. So um, both JSON and YAML are pretty easy to work with in Python, thanks to having some modules that come built into Python. Um, uh, and those two modules have exactly the same name, JSON and YAML. So we'll show here some examples of, of how they work. So first of all, the JSON module. So um, JSON module is used to go and convert your data to JSON formatted strings, and then also to convert the JSON formatted string back into uh, some Python data types. So the uh, function which is used to convert it to a string is called dumps, um, which is dump string. Um, uh, and that is used to go and convert uh, nearly all Python data types um, into, into JSON formats. Not everything can quite be converted uh, into JSON straightforwardly. So um, sometimes you come across data types which can't be dumped to JSON uh, immediately. But um, uh, for those that can, um, the process is very, very simple. So I just import the JSON module and then I print the results of doing um, uh, json.dumps, um, pass it the dictionary, and then the keyword parameter, the indent equals four, um, that's being used to um, persuade the JSON module to do some uh, sort of equivalent almost to pretty print. It's, it's doing some nice formatting to put things on different lines. Um, if you don't have the indent equals four, it'll put it all onto one line, which is more compact and better for transmitting data over the internet, but less human readable. So again, you have this compromise. Um, and you'll see the resulting format actually looks quite like native Python code. And you have to look a bit carefully and then you realize that the Boolean value um, is all lowercase true and not capitalized T. Um, and that's basically the only difference um, between uh, the way you'd write down the Python data type and the way that JSON writes it down. Um, but as I said, like the pretty print, it's a fairly readable format that you could imagine you could go into a text editor and you could happily go away and edit that. Um, and then uh, work with it independently of Python. Um, so you can 
uh, just print the the output string you produce with JSON dumps to a file. Um, but actually, the JSON module provides a dump method, dump function that will go and directly write um, your data to a file. And then, having written your data to a file, you can use the JSON.load uh, method to um, read it back out of a file again. So an example of how one might do that, this is a little example, we're gonna round trip uh, our data. So I'm gonna write the dictionary we had out to a file, and then I'm gonna immediately read it back in again. And again, you see, this is basically two lines to write it and two lines to read it. And in each case, one of those lines is just the, the with open that we covered in unit one of files. And so I'm doing uh, the json.dump, the dictionary, and then dot dump takes the second uh, parameter, which is the file variables I need to write to. And then the inverse operation is json.load. And I just call json.load and pass it the opened file for reading. And it will then read the data in. And then the final line, I'm just proving that I've round tripped it successfully by showing that the new dictionary is the same as the old dictionary, meaning it has the same keys with the same values and it returns true, which is good. It means the, the round trip has worked. OK, so that was the JSON module. Um, the YAML module um, works in broadly the same sort of way, um, uh, and it produces uh, YAML formatted um, files. So um, in YAML, the uh, function that's used to make a string is uh, .dump. Uh, unfortunately, not dot dumps. For some reason, they have slightly different names of the functions, just to confuse you. Um, but YAML dot dump um, takes care of the first part of producing a representation of the data you've been given it. So again, here you can see the the format's slightly different from JSON. Um, there's less punctuation marks. It's a little bit maybe uh, easier to read. Um, sort of a bit like Python, it uses indentation to indicate. Um, the the level of uh, sublevel you're at. Um, the YAML is intrinsically a, a, a fixed format in terms of the number of spaces you put where and so on. And so there's no um, extra parameter to make it a more human readable format. This is just what it looks like. Um, uh, so then in order to go and save that to a file, uh, in the case of YAML, there isn't that the uh, ability to add a, a, a file to write to as a parameter. You just have to go and print the, the string produced with the YAML dump uh, to, to a file. Um, but then there is a YAML load function, uh, which again sort of works uh, slightly similarly. So again, the code to do the round trip is again, two lines to write and two lines to read. So this time you can see that I'm having to use the print function to print the results of the YAML.dump um, I'm here, I'm using the file keyword parameter on print to say I want to print to a file, not to the console this time. And then the reading code, um, then uh, it's yaml.load. Uh, I have to pass it the name of the file I want to read from. And then um, actually YAML, the YAML module allows you some extra options um, for dealing with um, uh, data types that are uh, not kind of regularly defined in 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 uh, the YAML format. So the YAML format actually is a allows you to uh, extend the format, extend the way you can write data types out to uh, disk. Um, and the YAML module supports doing all of this. Um, it's beyond the scope of this um, unit, certainly. Um, but that second call to YAML.loader is part of the mechanism that's used to ensure that you, um, you you can deal with these extra data types that you might have created. Um, so when you do the load, you just pass it yaml.loader and it, it just works, um, is the short answer. And again, the same thing here, I'm showing that the um, new dictionary that I loaded in was equal to the, um, the original dictionary I had. So again, the round tripping is working successfully. So that was a couple of examples, therefore, of, of or three examples, therefore, how you can output uh, more complicated data types um, uh, in, in Python.